decided to come down this little road that leads to a dead end. You might have seen Rob's Evo wagon in the videos, but because it's always close to us, I just take it for granted and we never actually have talked about it. I shot some photos for juice box before we started the vlogs. Paddy shot it for speed hunters. The killer about all of our mates having nice cars is they're always around so you don't go, oh wow, we need to, there's no immediacy to take photos or document any of this stuff because it's literally like part of the furniture. Rob hates the camera, but eventually he warms up to it. All right, Ruben is the interpreter for Rob. Has a HKS rear axle. <laughs> yeah. Has a G-Ready windscreen. <laughs> and it has teen doors. Yeah. HKS aerial. Right. And that's all he really wants to disclose. Yeah, right. I hope you enjoyed the car. It's got a HKS rear axle and G-Ready windscreen, so. Yeah. One of cool. seven ever made. People are probably watching the video because they want to know about the car. Yeah. So, hey, Rob, Rob, come on. No. Well, look, I'll shout over from here. You imported this in 2000 and... 15. And it was the first one in at the time? Yep. So this was the very first Evo IX wagon imported from Japan. And it was just before the prices went fucking crazy. How much did you pay for it at the time? Or it was still relatively decently priced. Four grand. And to get one of these in from Japan now on license plates in Ireland, it would cost you 30 grand. So what made you buy a wagon? What made you go just because you'd never, you've had everything else. It's mad they've done it just for one run. They put in all the, the arches and did like their own custom rear end. I love this part here. Does the nine come back just the exact same way as this or is it just this whole rear end is just designed for the wagon? Oh, it's just for the wagon. It is, isn't it? Because it has a HKS rear axle and a Gretty windscreen, I always thought it was one of the most impressive machines around. Yeah, well that's unique. Yeah. I bet you no one else has a Gretty windscreen. I wouldn't say so. People are Googling Grady windscreen right now. Probably. You've seen his shed tour that we've done already, but Rob is our resident Mitsubishi guy. We have someone for everything, but he keeps the variation in things with us. He's always supplied the best Mitsubishis. Yeah. In typical Rob fashion, he got carried away, and because he has access to Yahoo and he likes buying loads of stuff, he fell down a dark, slippery slope and he still hasn't climbed out of it. And the result you see is this. Here's a Enki RPO1s, but are they the RPN1s? So these were specifically made for the R33 GTR for the N1 series races. They came on the, specifically on the race cars or they were purchased for N1 racing. These came in on another Evo. So Rob has been importing and in a nice way we could say dismantling Mitsubishis for many years. We used to call him the Evo killer because it made him sound kind of cooler. <laughs> it was a necessary evil because through bringing stuff in and then buying these cars when they were cheap during the recession stuff He slowly worked his way up to having all this kind of stuff So you're kind of like Mr. X but of the Mitsubishi world now. It's uh, too expensive to, to do that stuff anymore This is the longest you've had a project without yeah, had. This is the longest car you've ever had how many years six, six years you took it back to bare metal on the bottom when you got it because Mitsubishis are absolutely chronic for rusting and if anyone tells you any different, they're full of shit. They're the worst of all the Japanese cars for rust, aside from Hondas, Mazda, Mazda. Nissans, Mazda. Actually, they're all shit. Mazda Ma and Mitsubishi, I think, are probably the worst. Yeah, because of our climate as well, it doesn't suit Mitsubishis and you've broken enough of them to know that they fucking rot from the inside out. So in 2016, or was it 15, you stripped it back to bare metal on the bottom and got it all under sealed. 2015. Yeah. Let's put it on a lift now. We can just go back right now and get her up on the lift. Ganadors, before they went out of control in prices, which is depressing. 25 mil front wings, are they bigger on the front? Uh, yeah, Probably. Remember, we'll just pretend they're 25 mil. Uh, the bonnet is Varus, is it? Don't know. We'll just pretend it's Varus. Charge speed wings, carbon Varus bonnet. Off of a fella in England brand. Off of a fella in England brand. What else can you tell me about this, Rob? <laughs> What's the rear spoiler? Off a of fellow in England brand. So Rob just buys stuff if he sees things that he likes on up garage. Literally as we park the car up, he just goes, ah, oh, did you see me brace that I got for the roof? And you look in, I didn't even know you could get a fucking brace for there. So it kind of just goes across between the B and the C pillar. It just bolts into the OG's handles. Ah, for God's sake. Very nice yellow mats. You have a... Uh... That's lovely, Rob. Oh, you had brides in the front, did you? Switch it out to Recaro's. What are these out of? Okay, so every Japanese car reminding you that it's making a lot of beeping. Tomy shift knob, 
Defi Link controller setup. Nice carbon pod with a selection of Defis with the black faces. So that's loading. Okay. Oh, well, Rob might have to show you. What's he have to show me? That this connects into the OBD. And then and kills his battery. No. So what's it doing there then? Battery, injector, so it's like a GTR. intake temperature. Okay. It displays um, on And is that linked up through, oh, HKS. Yeah, HKS. Rob, what's going on there? You need to explain that. It's a program though. Is it built into the Pioneer or is it? Oh, it's a separate thing that just plugs into it. All oh, right, and it just links up then with the Pioneer. Yeah. Everyone's going to be sad because of the beeping noise. And his teen red face, yeah, it's a teen EDFC Active Pro, so you can control your dampen. It's Very a bit nice. more advanced than the first EDFC, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's, it has a GPS and yaw. Does it have a yaw sensor? Active yaw sensor. GPS, G, uh, G sensor. Really? G sensor. In the fucking coilover adjustment. Yeah. This is um, standard Momo, is it? For for. Uh, yeah. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> Profec B Spec 2 boost controller, Defi link controller, the Pioneer link to the HKS OBD yeah. onboard diagnostics and information system. Lovely. Let's take a look under the hood. You ready? Pop the hood. Remember we were in Autobax. Oh yeah, you bought Rob this keyring in Autobax because Rob, you'll see why in a minute, he has a small bit of a Tomy fetish. Yeah, on purpose. Yep. Rob likes to drag things out. Holy shit balls. Oh look it has the little chrome uh, fucking plug cover exactly like this. And so. Wow. <laughs> so there's a bit of a bit of a Tommy uh, bonanza going on underneath the bonnet here. Or the hood. Tommy oil cap, fancy Tommy plug cover. We've got the uh, Tommy pulleys which probably leads to Tommy cams inside, Tommy probably everything inside. Tommy Turbo. Tommy Look Turbo. 3D. Can you get that? Tommy Tommy Turbo. Now the rad is greddy because Tommy don't make a rad for one of these. Otherwise you'd have it. Manifold is Tommy. So we got the Tommy manifold. Got a Tommy complete engine. This is a Tommy complete engine. This Tommy <laughs> engine came in in an Evo 4. Rob dismantled it and rebuilt it and put it in here. And this is the result. There are other Tommy stuff that I'm not, or we covered all the Tommy. Tommy downpipe, yeah. Tommy turbo elbow. He said Tommy turbo elbow. He said Tommy downpipe. He said Tommy, Tommy turbo. Tommy, <laughs> Tommy turbo. <laughs> he said, Tommy actuator. Tommy turbo turbo. He said Tommy fucking, decat. Tommy decat. Tommy said Tommy decat. Is there Tommy exhaust? Tommy, Tommy exhaust. Titanium exhaust. Tommy Tommy Turbo. Tommy tailpipe. <laughs> Tommy Timmy. We, uh, this is not Tommy. What is that? Tommy. Tommy. What does that say? A pexy. a pexy. This is a very delicious engine, mate. Uh, every time I ask you the horsepower, you say you don't know, and you're going to say the same thing when I ask you again. So roughly, you don't know. Maybe over 400 horsepower. Uh, for 80ish. Okay. And you actually daily this for fucking ages. Yep. Like, this is one of the most ignorant cars. Even when you hear it coming, it's just... I like that you just build completely overkill cars just to go to the shop and get a sandwich in them. I've never seen Rob get a sandwich in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pretend he gets sandwiches, right? Go to the shop and get Red Bull. Not a sponsor. Arm-wise and stuff then, I see a bunch of Cusco stuff peeking out. Is that Cusco? Tommy Arms. Tommy Arms Turbo. That's not really underneath. Did you not paint or like refresh everything? <laughs> Lie to us, Rob. The internet doesn't know. Well, you spoke about the engine, so next would be the drivetrain, so the clutch and gearbox. Yeah, was this automatic when it came in? Yeah. So we should probably address that. Most of these are automatic, aren't they? Like, yeah. And you put a Evo 7, seven gearbox in it and broke it. and broke it. And what's in it now? Another one. Evo 4 gearbox. And you have a nice LSD in there as well. And yeah, Rally Art LSD. Rally Art LSD. Standard clutch. Standard clutch. Me bollocks. What clutch is it? ATS twin carbon. Aside from all the joking and shit, this is probably one of the most mental Evo wagons outside of Japan because there's not that many of them over this side of the globe. There's a few in the UK. You were the first one. What, there's four of them here? Five maybe? Three in Ireland. Three in Ireland. Not a whole lot of them in the UK, is there? 
That's probably 20 out of them. Alright. Who makes this Ooh. brace? This blue brace. Oh, oh look. It's HPI intercooler. HPI Nobody intercooler. Nobody fucking told us about that. Yeah, Rob, that wasn't on the sheet. And it's painted black. So it's the nice reason I painted it black was for um, heat expansion soakage and carbon <laughs> issues. Yes. It's this is carbon also, Rob. You failed to tell us. Is there an oil cooler somewhere on it as well? Yeah, trust oil. I had a trust oil cooler. Peaky peak. So we're, we're really good at reviewing cars and showing you stuff. And I hope you really like this one. When we're trying to find the stuff ourselves. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Rob is painful to, we'll he actually bags. doesn't care. Yeah, more fun than that, you can find it. It is, isn't it? Teen electronic damper stuff Oops. that sits on top. dampening force controller. This is Cusco. It's a sensor, it doesn't go to anywhere. Cusco oil catch can. Rob, explain. It's air intake temperature sensor. Not in use. All of our mates that have nice stuff, it kind of just becomes part of the furniture and I end up going off featuring other things when like the greatest stuff sometimes is right under the nose. Standard calipers look bigger than the average layman's car calipers. Pro Project Moon discs. Yeah. Smoked. Is that the Peugeot color, was it? Wished. Yeah. A plane has started up. Project Mew rotors. And pads, yeah. And pads. Look at that. It is titanium. Oh, that's nice. Really, you should nearly put it on the lift. You show how clean it is underneath? Yeah, yeah for a yoke that's been driven a lot, it's fairly mint. Yeah, I mean, it just looks... Wow. Just really. Ah, yeah, look at that. Oh. So, Rob doesn't have a family, but he has a family wagon. He just has no family. Well, he doesn't have, like, <laughs> seven kids. <laughs> Rob doesn't have a family. <laughs> He has no family. The idea was kind of joking as a bit of a parts hauler, but then it became way more than that. Yep. It was like, oh, I'll buy this because it has space to just throw parts in and shit. And it's like, oh, look at that for action. Oh, you missed the mark. Is that Tommy? Uh, that's Tommy as well. This beard was also crafted by Tommy. This is a fun drinking game. Anyone watching this? Every yeah. time Tommy yeah, yeah, says, yeah. take a shot. <laughs> a nice car, Rob, and you've kept it well. Imagine. It's no Agri spec uh, PD160, but it does the job. What about the spoiler? He doesn't know what it is. Guy from the UK spoiler is what we're going to call it. Tommy. But there's planes now. We came down here because it was quiet. There was a lot of activity. Well, this is a good plane actually. Yeah, it's like a real plane. Oh, good. It's a Delta 3.2. We suddenly become plane watchers. Oh, shit. It's a Beach, it's a beach King <laughs> Air 250. Ejectors. There he is, look. He's doing 187. So there's 700 cc ejector. 11. 1100 Fucking plane. flyboys for like two minutes and the wheels were mint and then it completely kicked and brake dust. It literally two minutes of flyboys. That's very impressive. Look at the fucking N1. That's hilarious. Looks they look ancient. If you reverse that now you could use that as the intro. No. <laughs> You ruined the outro. So it looks like it's coming. That was the end. The one in the background. Yeah, fucking cheese is there. Oh, going yeah. In that oh yeah, shit, what am I doing filming this? I should actually get one. Now put them up on top. Soko. No, I'll reverse it in. It shouldn't, it would, shouldn't stick with now. Yeah. So, black is negative and blue is positive. Okay. Good time. Great. So, what we're doing here is, I actually don't have any, any idea if we filmed any of this. We did, probably didn't. Suddenly there was just fans. Yeah, when I, we ah. fucked around with this a couple of weeks ago, but Brian just came out and just fitted the rads to the radiator. 
Tell a fish Aaron. Tell a fish Aaron. <laughs> About seven people will get that. Just the seven Irish viewers. And now he's wiring up this little thing that's here, which is a... Fan switch. A fan switch that's going to a temperature... Fan switch relay. Relay? <laughs> It'll be a fan switch relay. A fan relay, yeah. A fan relay that kicks in at 90 or is it 80? Uh, I don't remember. I think it's about 80 or 90. Yeah, I think it was. No I thought it was higher. I thought it was lower than that. 85, 77 is saying so. Okay. On at 85 and off at 77. Right. No switches. So that was the last thing really with the engine bay main stuff because we couldn't find fans. There was a global shortage on fans. There was a massive shortage of fans. So they're on. We didn't actually uh, use the pun, the pull through stuff. We actually made little brackets so it doesn't damage the, the fins. And it's nice. You just copied your setup you made about 10, 15 years ago, probably 15. longer, easily. <laughs> yeah, probably 15. So they are the relays for this. So we haven't been filming all these little niggly things that we've been doing, which we probably should, but we haven't. Coming out here for like 10 minutes here and half an hour there. It's kind of the last thing here in the engine bay. There's just tying up little wires, but I hope I filmed some of this progress somewhere along the way. If not, that's all from us here in the studio, folks. Stats. Right, we should be able to, if we turn on the key and battery and stuff. Should put these. these boxes probably to the wall. Right, power is on. Okay. Woo! Magic, 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 <laughs> On and on, they went. Yeah, I'll just keep looping that for like 10 minutes. Magic, 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 magic.